Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Today's Woodblock Wednesday um, is sort of a, a sneak preview to an upcoming exhibition I'm working on. The exhibition should go live either on Friday of this week or early next week. Um, and so that that's something you should certainly keep your eyes up for. The exhibition will be featuring an assortment of prints, paintings, and sculpture that uh, feature the human form. So uh, it will, the, the title of the exhibition is called Go Figure, an Exploration of the Human Form in Japanese Art. And so I have pretty much uh, all genres covered in this exhibition. We have ukiyo-e, shinhanga, sosaku-hanga, and contemporary. And um, speaking of contemporary, um, I brought out a wonderful woodblock print by a contemporary artist. And because Halloween is actually next week on Monday, I thought I would feature a design by a contemporary artist um, who produces uh, woodblock prints with the theme of ghosts in mind. So without, um, yeah, so uh, without more uh, or further ado, let's uh, go to the table and have a look. So I'm going to pan out um, so you can see what I have on the table for you today. Uh, and the, the print, let me get my... Um, my cheat sheet here so I don't forget anything. Today's uh, print we'll be discussing is a wonderful woodblock print by Paul Binney. He's actually not a Japanese artist as you could tell by his name. He's a Scottish born artist but trained in Japan and um, produces woodblock prints as the Japanese did in the earlier part of the 20th century and as they continue to do. So again, uh, this is a, a woodblock print, um, much like the other prints that I've showcased on uh, Woodblock Wednesday. And so just to give you a little bit of information of Paul, uh, on Paul, he was born in 1967, so it makes him still a, a relatively young artist. Um, and he produces these compelling woodblock prints of varying subjects. He does wonderful landscapes, but he also does um, portraits and, and designs like this that feature tattoos on people. And um, in this particular design is called Yoshitoshi's Ghost. A hundred and N, um, the, the print I should say, is from a series um, called A Hundred Shades of Ink of Edo. So again, the, the title is called Yoshitoshi's Ghost. And the print was done in 2004. All right, so I got all the sort of technical details about the print um, in terms of the title and the date and, and everything out. Now, I'd, I really want to discuss the actual uh, design and all of the wonderful uh, connections Paul has made to Yoshitoshi's work. So just to step back a, a moment, uh, Yoshitoshi is a Meiji period artist for those of you who are not familiar with him and uh, he's credited with producing some amazing designs of ghosts and goblins as well as some very compelling um, warrior scenes so if you're interested in that genre um, I would encourage you to look up Yoshitoshi and um, you know, I could talk more about Yoshitoshi, and I have, and I will, but for today's purposes, we're just going to refer to some of his most noteworthy images that are in this print, and, um, and then we could sort of um, talk about some other aspects of the print. But first of all, what we have here is a male nude, which is not something you typically find on Japanese woodblock prints. Usually, bijinga or images of beautiful women um, are much more prevalent and it's the first thing that comes to mind. But Paul has made bijinga, but he's also adding an interesting uh, body of work that features the, the male form. And it's not just an examination of the fail, male form, it's also sort of celebrating tattoo culture, 
which is not necessarily completely accepted in Japan, although it's certainly part of you could you could argue it's Japanese culture in the sense that a lot of these tattoos originate um, from Japan, or the idea of of certain type of motifs in tattoos originate from Japan. It's really pretty much an underground art. And it's still shied away from um, in the popular culture. Here in the West, in particular, tattoos are really accepted. And, you know, quite frankly, most people I know have tattoos. Um, and, and so in Japan, that's certainly not the case. And in fact, in some areas, or not, I won't even say areas, in, in some particular places, you can't enter with tattoos showing. And you're not even admitted into the the hot springs um, that are accessible via the public. You know that you could certainly get a, a private uh, one, but if you have any tattoos, you can't uh, uh, go to any public hot spring. And, and so, so that that's one of those interesting sort of paradoxes about uh, tattoo culture in Japan. Well, Paul is borrowing from the tattoo culture and he has a a a male who has a a almost a full body suit we can't tell what obviously what 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 tattoos the individual might have in front but uh the 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 purpose of his of his composition is to show his elaborate uh back tattoo and what we have here is a really interesting design that looks very familiar and so what i've done is actually i've taken out the book this is the book 100 uh, um, aspects of the moon by yoshitoshi and i've bookmarked the page and so this is the design that paul is referencing it's a design um, that shows a court lady um, confronting a a ghost ghost like demon who has been haunting um, a family member of hers and that ghost was a, actually a member of the court and you can tell because he's wearing a court hat um, it's one of those hats that 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 the men of the court would wear and so now he's sort of i mean he's a, certainly a ghost and he kind of resembles a tengu which is a japanese demon and so this is a confrontation between these two individuals, and Yoshitoshi sort of captures a dramatic pause in the action. But what Paul does is that he, the way that he describes it is, is that the scene is after Yoshitoshi's design, or after even the moment of confrontation, right there before anything happens, how, it, how one might imagine what would happen after uh, Yoshitoshi's design. And so what we have here is we have the, the ghost demon and he's holding on to the head of the, the court lady. And so it's a very bloody, gory, um, sort of graphic um, scene, very much uh, typical of Yoshitoshi's early work. And so for those of you who, who know Yoshitoshi's early um, warrior designs, there's several designs where you have one warrior who has lobbed off the head of another and carrying it in his hand. That, it, that's actually pretty typical. And so what we have here is Paul Binney looking at Yoshitoshi's print from this celebrated series. This is Yoshitoshi's masterpiece, but embellishing it with something that Yoshitoshi would have done earlier in his career. And um, it, it creates a wonderful, really striking design as a tattoo on the, the back of this individual. So I want to zoom in so you can kind of see it. I mean, I think it's a really striking design and it's a really interesting sort of connection looking back to not just Yoshitoshi's design, but also looking at his work and connecting it to even an earlier style of his. So the other thing I want to point out is since we're on this book, 
the, the another page um, shows a ghost from the tale of Genji. And um, so what we have here is a really wonderful tale of Genji ghost. And, and if we look at the print here, we have the silhouette of that ghost. Um, and the silhouette is emerging as incense smoke. Here we have an incense burner. The smoke is uh, sort of drifting up. And here is the, the silhouette. I think it, that's a really striking, wonderful um, sort of image. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a ghost image because what we just have is the outline. And it's very fitting for the, for the subject of, of the, 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 the design because it is a ghost. So I think that's really clever. Now it's it's maybe hard to tell because the background has this wonderful um, printing of the wood, not just wood grain, but also the uh, circular Baran work. And we could talk about that in a moment. But but if you want to, I think I want to just draw your attention first to the silhouettes of the ghosts there. The, the last uh, aspect of the design I want to point out is this sort of demon right here, sort of on the outer th thigh buttocks of, the, of this um, model. Right here, you see if I could invert the phone. This is from Yoshitoshi's 36 Ghosts. I forgot to pull the book out to show you, but this, is, uh, this, this design is taken straight out from from the, the, the series. And in the way that Paul adds that design to the portion of the body, it really works um, in how he's, he's incorporated the, the design into the form. I mean, that, that, is, that is quite nice and any tattoo artist would approve. The other thing I wanna point out, which I think is, is really clever, is Paul has, replicated Yoshitoshi's signature quite well. And so the title is Yoshitoshi's Ghosts. And here is, that's his name, no, referring to belonging to. Um, and then the, there's this, this, this really interesting little goblin. So Yoshitoshi's Ghosts, that's uh, what the title um, is written out. And I wanna point out that that goblin is taken directly from this particular design. This is not from his 36 uh, um, ghost prints, though it's a reworking of this design because he does include this this uh, this tail. It's it's called the heavy basket, and I don't want to go into the entire story. But at the end of the day, this person opens up a basket full of goblins and and this is one of the goblins that um, is in the print so i think that's a really clever way of incorporating yet another print into this print so when we're looking at this there's at least four prints in 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 this design that that paul is referencing so now the the print is matted you know, this, this work has been consigned to me and it's matted, but not framed. But I think it's kind of nice when it's matted because you get to see how Paul extends the figure forward beyond the margin. And you have the incense burner beyond the margin plate of the design. And this, that is actually a technique that Yoshitoshi himself has used in prints. And so I think that's really kind of clever. Um, yet another aspect of a Yoshitoshi print within this composition. So what I want to do now is um, just zoom in so you can enjoy the, the printing. Sometimes um, print comes alive when you hold it at an angle so you could see 
the wonderful Beren work. Um, it's that circular sort of printing um, that's in the background. It creates a really interesting texture, um, a wonderful sort of backdrop that also helps the figure even move forward that much more. <clears throat> and it's 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 one of those technique te excuse me, can't talk today. It's one of those techniques that actually was popularized in in the um, 20th century by uh, some Shinhanga designs that Watanabe produced, um, as well as other publishers. And so Paul here is uh, adding all of those embellishments that were um, invented or popularized in the 20th century to these motifs that are from the Meiji period. Yoshitoshi is one of, one of my favorite um, artists. Um, and so, yeah, actually, when I first started collecting, I was collecting Yoshitoshi prints. And, um, and so I think it's wonderful when a contemporary artist, oh, particularly a contemporary woodblock print artist, is looking back and sort of reimagining um, aspects of ukiyo-e culture or ukiyo-e and incorporating these aspects into a new work because this is entirely new this is paul's own work um certainly would you can't confuse this this uh design with anything else that any other um shinhanga or ukiyo-e artist would have produced however paul's sort of rethinking of some uh ukiyo-e designs or or Meiji period um, Yoshitoshi prints is very clever, um, and it, in, in terms of how it's incorporated here. So I'm going to zoom in again. I mean, there's so much to look at. And so, for those of you who are not familiar with Paul Binney's work, I encourage you to look him up. This print will be available in, in my upcoming exhibition in a matter of days. And of course, there's a catalog raisonné um, that showcases Paul's body of work up to a few years ago. And I have that book available for sale, as well as the Yoshitoshi books that you see uh, here on my table. Uh, pull these out. These are books that um, uh, you could find on my website or private message me if you're interested in the in the print or the books i'm going to pan out a little bit so you could see um the table one last time Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Uh, I really enjoyed sharing that uh, striking Paul Binney design, particularly because H Halloween is coming up next week, and I thought it might be nice to discuss some Japanese ghosts. Uh, there are uh, other prints online that you could check out to see what Yoshitoshi produced in both of those series. So if you're, familiar, if you're not familiar with Yoshitoshi, this is a wonderful introduction, and I encourage all of you to look into his work, as well as uh, the work of Paul Binney. So uh, thank you very much for joining me, and I want to welcome all of you who, who are, are seeing these videos on YouTube. Uh, this video was actually produced live on Facebook, but uploaded onto YouTube, and all of my Woodblock Wednesday videos are there. So if you, if you want to catch uh, previous episodes, I invite you to do so. So... I look forward to seeing you all next week on my next installment of Woodblock Wednesday and keep an eye out for my exhibition that will be going live in a matter of days. Thank you. See you then. Bye.